Evening all, how's it going? Thanks for sticking around and waiting for me to be ready. Let's see who's hanging around still. We have Bremen, Darius, uh, Mifiano, Shimera, and Uglu Strexi. Good to see ya. Alright, let's do some Lisp stuff. So, uh, last week we kind of got basic. We got some basic input stuff done. And actually, we don't need this function anymore. Um, and right at the end of the stream, we added this little alien and just made it strafe, have it decrement its health when a bullet hit it. And uh, yeah, when I eventually hit it, it dies. There we go. So we have that kind of basic thing going on now. Um, but we had a couple of places where some of the things we wanted to represent, we just don't have nice APIs for yet. And so this stream was basically meant to just be, um, yeah, fleshing out some of these APIs. And what else? Oh yeah, no, there was a, there was one like additional kind of feature or construct that we need to add, and that's God. So this is a monotheistic um, engine, so there will be one God, but he can spawn off any number of things he likes. The idea is there is all there's one actor that's always present that's instantiated by the engine. And it's just around forever. And um, otherwise, it's exactly the same as any other actor. So, yeah. That's it. That's all it is. Um, so we'll probably just take the fine actor and fuck around with it. And that will be our god. So. Let's have a look. We'll do fine god. Let's bring this up here. Actually, what should it look like? It should be pretty much the same as this. And... For now, starting, so game starting is the default state and then game running and we'll do nothing in there. The game starting will spawn, what should it spawn? A couple of things. It will spawn the alien and it will spawn the ship. And then it will transfer into the new state, which was, I'm sure we had that change state. New state is game running. Shimera's got some links going on. What is this, sir? Some <laughs> weird Half-Life style animation stuff. Cool. Um, oh, you're doing some Rust. Nice. You have no idea how people get anything done in that language. This seems like a pretty badass language. A like, bunch of folks from work are really into it. Um, actually, yeah, I, I will pimp some links. There's a guy called Ferris who is currently doing a Virtual Boy emulator in Rust. Um, and has been doing a bunch of other projects as well. It's r a lot more technical than my streams. Um, but very cool. So I highly recommend that. First stream stuff. Shamira saying the requirement for absolute type resolution at compile time is driving me insane. Yeah, they like I assume you're kind of fighting the borrow checker and stuff at the moment. Um Yeah, that's that's definitely something you'd kind of end up working through and, until you learn to anticipate it a bit. But it's yeah. It's a burger. Right. Oh no, this isn't bullet. We want this to be defined god, and we want bullets to behave as they did before. So that should work, yes. And we want to make this work now. So all this is gonna basically boil down to is def macro. I'm gonna move this up above here. I want the same signature as the fine actor, except we don't need a name because there's only one god. And we're going to emit a uh, progen. We're going to define an actor, which is just called god. Um, and we're going to fill in all the normal arguments. So we have values uh, and states. Is that right? No.
No, actually, it's just that. Okay. And then we are going to <coughs> have a variable called God, which is going to be nil to begin with. And then in the main loop, wherever it is, when we start the engine, there's probably calls in it. Where is that? Yeah, it calls in it. And all this needs to do is um, say, unless there's already a god, um, spawn one. It wants two. It wants a position. And it's going to be at zero, zero, because everything uh, the god is going to do is going to be in world space coordinates. And it's complaining that that variable doesn't exist yet. Oh yeah, we don't actually need to define that there. We just need to define it in general. And I think, let's have a look at the ASD. I'm not sure if actors or daft loads first. Yeah, this loads first. So for now, I'm going to just stick the, the god state over here. So yeah, that was actually easier than I thought. Um, so if we just go and check out this macro now, if we expand that, it expands, it expands to define actor god. And that really doesn't need to have, um, one second, it really doesn't need to have that symbol ahead of it. Let's just do that again. Okay, define actor god. And if we expand that, it works just like anything else. So that's cool. So hopefully now, um, what else could I do? Hmm. There he is. We do need to have a default implementation for God. So if I just stick this here, take out this. Like something called main, get rid of this, get rid of this. Is that valid? Yeah, looks fine. Oh no, it doesn't like not having a visual at the moment. Okay, so we need to go and fix def define actor because we're gonna have things that aren't um, aren't visuals. So visual. So do a when. Visual. How do we do this? Yeah, that will return nil otherwise, and that will be spliced in. This should be fine. Where else is visual used? Yeah, it's just going to copy the visual over, which will be nil. Update all that. Yep, that's fine. That looks okay to me. So now if we go and find the default implementation. Oh, God, which was in actors. Oh, I closed that file. That was stupid. God, here we go. Sure, save it. Ah, now if we've just defined the macro, are we going to be able to use it in this file? Probably not. So, let's just make a separate file for him. Don't want to be faffing with this guy for too long. He's only got, it's not very important. Oops. Cool. And let's, uh, seeing as we're already running, I want to make sure we have a god. So I think we have to call current actors. Yeah, we only have a ship at the moment. Let me bring that up again. And what would have happened, like, after we've made these changes, if we restarted everything, it would instantiate a god on startup. But seeing as we haven't done that, I'll need to go and do it myself. So. We're just going to do this 
set f guard to be spawn guard. There we go. Something like this. Oh, it's still doing that stupid stuff. Wait a second. Let's go and have a look at this again. Where's the god file? God, I can't type the shit right now. Let's bring this down. Visual. Where's visual? Yeah, it should be nil. What's going on? Hmm. Maybe I haven't recompiled it. Let's do that. Let's try that again. Yeah. That hasn't freaked out this time. And now we've got a god. Now we can say... Darth, start again. What is this? Something is still trying to call load text, and it's update all existing actors. There he is. Uh, we'll skip that task because I think it's probably the old one. Yeah. What? Okay, it's going to keep trying this shit, isn't it? Draw actor. Oh, of course. Oh, of course. Right, let's go back to actors again, and we can look for draw actor. And we just don't need to do that unless there's a visual. So with slots, visual, when visual, draw actor, continue. Okay, that's a bit better. So now we should be moving again. Cool. And we should have, <laughs> there's two gods in the list. Right. Empty that list. Okay. Let's spawn a god and then look at the current actors. There's nothing in there. What is going on? Spawn is meant to add itself to that list. Unless Unless we're not running for some reason. No, it didn't seem so. Let's see. Yes, okay, so it starts up now and you get a god in the list. Good. And if we stop and then start again, we should still only have one in there. Good, that's alright then. Okay, but the only problem was... Oh yeah, that definition of God had no behavior. So when we do this, it freaked out. Redefining copy actor state, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Redefining change state. Yeah, that, that's expected. Didn't spawn our new ship an alien though, which is a bit disappointing. That is a little strange. And I should have been able to spawn it like this as well, because it's a regular actor now. Oh, fuck, okay. <laughs> That's all it needed. And we've got a bullet there that's still uh, a spurious bullet. Okay, so there's a bit of weirdness, but other than that, we're kind of back on track again, I think. Just some discussions of rust in the uh, in the chat there. Cool. Ah, oh, right. Interested how we've got we've got a ship, an alien, and a god currently in play, but no bullets yet. Oh, there it is. God is currently drawn as a bullet, which is completely insane. Okay, so when we change from having a visual to no visual, it freaks out. And it must be in this update all existing actors thing as a load. There's a load text here somewhere. There it is. Um, 
when visual. Let's uh, retry that. Good. Okay. So now God doesn't look like a bullet. Nice. Okay. So we have an entity which now controls the rest of the game. And so you'd use it for things like, hey, if a new wave of aliens is going to appear every minute, then God would keep track of that. Or spawn off another invisible actor that kept took care of it. And then everything else is the same. That, that's pretty much it. So, okay. With that done, I just want to save this since we had a few things. Oh yeah, we, it seems we've added a god file. Um, we better add that to the ASD. File god. And now we need, just need to start adding things to the API. So the first stuff I, I thought of that um, I really want is I want to be able to get the angle between um, my actor and another actor and like and the distance to another actor and all that kind of stuff. Now, there's one thing though is that we don't really have a way of talking about other actors yet. So Hmm. So we could, like so what we would normally have is we would like we would have oh what am I trying to say? I, I want to be able to query the actors. That's what I'm talking about. Jesus Christ. I don't know what's going on in my head right now. More wine and or coffee and or not but other of those. So we need ways of querying for other actors and um, like for example uh, this god guy up here he's currently in the game running state um, what I want to do is say when the alien is dead spawn a new alien or wait a few seconds and then spawn a new alien so I'm going to need to have a way of keeping track of that stuff now I do have local state so what I can do is I can say um, I could add a variable here for alien. Um, and when I do this, I can say set up alien. And then down here, I can check how I would have to have something that allowed me to say, is it dead? So I suppose that's the first thing we really need. Let's go to the actors API. Um, we have defun is alive. Actor. And we're just going to go and check the dead variable, the dead uh, state on the object. But not on self. We're going to check on the actor. Okay. So if it's not dead, it's alive. And then we can say, hmm. Just go. Let's have is dead and is alive. More indirection. That's what everything needs. Okay. Um, when is dead? Alien. Um. Yeah, just spawn another alien, I suppose, like this. That's probably enough. Okay, let's see what goes on there. So it's freaking out because the alien is currently nil. Because 
When we recompiled this, we remained in the game running state, which we do want. But then, yeah. But then, of course, alien has now been initialized to nil, and is dead with nil is not valid. So, it basically, this boils down to how how loose do we want to make our API? Because what we could say is when actor um, and then if it's null um, it'll say it's not dead. But that also means that nil is alive which is kind of insane. Um, so we kind of want Ah, uh, no, that's not really good. If we're, if we're at that point, that's kind of gash. So how do we do this? How do we handle um, these kind of state changes? Unless we just put spawn alien up there. I mean, that would be the other thing, is we can just do this, this, remove that. Variable self is unbound. Oh, where the fuck is that coming from? Spawn alien. Oh, yes. Okay. Ha. Huh. That's interesting. So if you do anything in your um, in your local state, it doesn't know about self. That seems wrong. Let's go and have a look at how that's, that's done. So if you change your local vars... This is going to be done in the update, isn't it? Um, I hope it's going to be in this function. Hmm. And this would need to be done on every single. Um, Every single actor that we're updating. So that basically, we're going to recompile the actor definition, um, and it wants to then go and like initialize all that state and those local variables. So it's been doing it in this function, generated function so far, and then passing that along to all of the actors. Actually, that seems wrong in general. Hmm. Because then they're all going to get the same state. Really want this to happen for every single one. This is very strange. So vars is going to be a lambda that takes an actor is going to set self to be that actor and then is going to um, run the vars code. And that means when we go update all, this is going to be a function for generating vars. And think all we need to do is just do funcal genvars with a variable self is still undefined Let's skip this task and we'll try, whoops, are the nil filter one of the, what is going on? Whoops, skip task, skip task, skip task. Oh, we're still in this is dead issue. Okay, right, let's get back here and comment this stuff out until we get the, the first bit of state fixed. Jesus! Everything's breaking.
What the fuck? Okay, I bought this. Kill the main loop. Let's get back to the basics. We define an actor. It's freaking out when we're ex trying to expand this macro because it's saying the variable vars is unbound. Okay, so let's go and have a look. There's not something called vars now, apparently. Where is it? Looks like it should be there. Sounds like, oh yeah. I've just got this macro a little wrong. So let's take this and put that code here. And let's go and try and expand this again. Cool. So now down here, it's gonna we've got a function that is gonna be called next frame, which is gonna call this update all existing actors. It's gonna update all the gobs, even though there's only one, um, with some state stuff and a function which is gonna initialize the state for all of the actors. I think that's right. I think that's right. Well, we'll see in a second. Um, ah! Whew. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> I'm hitting all the wrong buttons. Okay, let's get that back. Back to our original exception. Then let's go into our test code. Let's recompile that. Let's say continue here. Now this should be running again. So if we do a clear and it cleared the screen and everything's still drawing. Good. By the way, that fucking clear color is just sick of looking at black in that corner. So it'll just be a horrible gray for now. Um, recompiling this seems to work, which is good. Um, it didn't spawn an alien though, which is kind of interesting. Um, let's just put a print in here. See, it printed alien. So what happened? Why are we not seeing one up here? Oh, where am I? Where's my ship gone? There it is. I have to deal with those actual controls as well. Hey, love like syntax. Good to see you. So, there is a ship and there is a god, but there is no alien in the current actors list, which is strange. Because there's meant to be. There's clearly one being created and spawned here. What is going wrong? Let's just compile this file again. We can jump correctly to spawn. Okay. So let's look at that current actors array again. Let's open in the inspector. Most of these other ones are spurious. So we don't need to worry about that. There's only two that are actually there and it's this one. Its position is zero, zero, zero. So everything should be fine there. That should be smack bam in, in the middle. Um, So this should call spawn. I mean, it, all this is, is working. It's creating an instance. 
and then it's meant to push that actor into current actors. Well, it's meant to push it into next actors, actually. That's interesting. I'm wondering just at the point where it's where it's running into the code, it's actually meant to be putting it in current actors. Oh, let's see. If we do this, break it back up, God, and recompile, and there's that alien. Okay, so we just we're evaluating this at the at a point in the loop where we need to be writing into current actors. So why is that? Let's go see where we run that code and see if we can just get it, tweak it so it can work properly. Not being very good at explaining myself today, but I hope that's still enjoyable enough to watch. Let's kill this alien because it's in the wrong damn place. Too close. Get away. It's in something to do with tasks. Tasks for next frame. Here it is. Tasks for next frame. Where is this used? It's used here. Okay, so it just loops through the tasks for next frame and then sets it to nil. And then this sets up the current viewport in kind of a slow, like it's slow because we're doing it every frame, but it doesn't matter. Then it calls update actors. Right. Okay, so I think I've got this. When we're iterating through, when we call spawn, we're pushing in the list of next axes, so on the next frame it will be visible. Now, is that right? Yes, I think it is. Let's have a look at where there's axes again. Ah, oh, I've got the memory of a fucking fish spawn. Yeah, we push it into the list of next actors. And then the first thing we do in update actors is set the fill pointer of next actors to be zero. So that's no good. I wonder if we can just set this earlier in the loop. Have this be on zero out um, next actors. And put this in it. And then we call this early. But that means that whenever something is spawned from local state, it always arrives one frame later than the thing that spawned it. That's kind of naff. What we can do though, so here we have, we basically pass in this variable that says, where do we want to spawn into? Um, and this is which array we're going to push the new thing into. We could just put this as a dynamic variable and then um, set it for different areas. So like here, let's do that. Therefore, spawn into, and we'll leave it as, we can have this as an override actually, we just say nil. We say here spawn into is, oh, what am I doing? Spawn into is going to be next actors. And then we just do this or Spawn into, yeah, I think that's 
current actors. Then we can get rid of this, because this was the version we were calling from the REPL because it doesn't know... Oh no, we're calling this from the REPL because we don't have a self in the REPL. Interesting. Okay, so... Ah, uh, how should we do this? Let pos be if self... Um, Ah, getting a little tangled here. One second. No. Spawn is always going to write into current actors. Because that's the one we're using the REPL and doesn't require a self. This one does require a self um, and it's depending on where we are in the execution is what we're spawning into. And I think that's... Uh, not sure about that. The only place spawn should be being called is within an actor. Is No, it's when there's self... Uh, why am I getting stuck on this? This is really silly. Let's just say it's based on spawn into. And then let's go and set that in the places we're able to call spawn, which is in update actors and when we're running the tasks. So where are you? Hacky as hell, but it will do for now. So another evening where I'm not drinking. And we can do it right. Right, so this is guy is still moving. When we try and spawn something, it breaks! Because it's using nil. Because spawn into is nil. Oh no! And that was inside update actors. How dare you! What did I do? Spawn. Oh no, it's spawn into. There we go. Let's compile that. Should be working. Oh, wait a second. We're still we're still in the debugger, so say nil. Okay, so that's working. Ah, and it's writing into the wrong place. Oh yes, of course. Wait a second. What was the whole point? Right. When we do tasks. We're writing into current actors. Yeah, that makes sense. There we go. Cool. Right. Yep. Now, actually, every time we recompile, we get a second one. And that's because we would normally want to do this, which says that this doesn't need to be... Uh, run when we recompile. But we got two ships now, so it's kind of kind of handy to have. So ba -ba -ba -bum, that one's dead. This one's not dead yet. Okay. And now we should be able to do this as well, which is say when the alien is dead, we spawn a new one. But it didn't happen. Let's print the alien and see what it was. Nope, it's not dead apparently. You look pretty dead. Okay, let's just do something hacky here. Like everything else wasn't. Def var temp zero is nil. And then in here, we're going to just say set f temp zero to alien. Now we've got that. Let's inspect it. And it's not dead, but the next one is dead. Okay, so we've got the um, concurrent updates. So we have two versions of each actor state. And this one's been marked as dead, but not its partner, which I think we should do. So let's go and see where things get killed. 
bit of a slower start than I planned, but that, that's fine. Okay, so. Okay, so we have, let's just inspect that object again. There is a slot called next. Seems we're gonna do all these slot values. Let's use with slots. We're gonna use dead and we're gonna use next. And this is going to be for self. We're going to set dead to true and then we're going to set dead to true here as well. Cool. If we go and, oops, actually it's the last one I wanted. Set this, set it to be true, and then an alien immediately spawns because the god just realized it was dead and spawned another one. So if I do this, you just hit it with a load of bullets, it disappeared and immediately spawned another. So we kind of want to put a little delay before it spawns up another one. So we will go and do that. We go back and test. Let's make a new state called spawn soon. And what's a nice way to have something happen after a delay? Now we'll just use the uh, temporal functions again. Spawn. Spawn counter or something like this. Let's have a think. We'll set that to nil for now. When the thing is dead, we're going to change state into spawn soon. And spawn soon is going to wait some like some number of seconds, and then it's going to do this. Now got to try and remember how T lambdas work, but what I think we can do is this. We can do after seconds two. Do that. That's going to create the counter. Um, what should we do? Call it in Q. Q E Q E. Is that in Q? Yeah. Q spawn. Wait and spawn. Okay, so the game's been running. When this guy's dead, it's gonna change into in Q spawn. And then it's gonna go into wait and spawn. Actually, what I'm gonna do is just do this. When spawn counter, uncle spawn counter. I think this will work. And then we can just do in Q spawn and this will immediately transition back to game running and we don't need to do this and we just have to go when is dead and we're not already waiting okay <laughs> let's see what garbage we get now till I don't play these games
Fucking hell. Right, so after two seconds, hopefully, we get another one. Nice. Love like Temtex is saying, make a semi-god that get an action from a god to wait and then spawn an alien actor and then semi-god suicide. Yeah, totally. Right, so we're going to define an actor called Demigod. Let's do this. It's going to have the spawn counter. Yeah, this is much better. Have the spawn counter. That's going to be the T Lambda. Oh, that formatting now. It's going to have a main where it just. It's going to spawn an alien. Ah, but now, like, now, then we've got this thing where the original god doesn't know about the alien anymore. It's kind of a butt. Ah. Okay, for now we're going to have to leave it without the demigod, but I like that idea and we should have it. Uh, we need ways of actors communicating at that point, and that's going to get a bit interesting. So, holy fuck, what is going on here? I think we're getting a shit ton of stuff spawned. Yep. That's a lot of aliens. Ah, set of current actors is nil. Whoa. Alright, let's let's spawn God again and see what was going on, because that looked wrong. Oh come on now. Oh yeah, it was under set F, wasn't it? What? What's going on here? Yeah. Let's stop again and see what we get. Okay, so stop, start. Okay, it's running. Uh, that's one of the things we do need to do actually, is when this whole thing stops, it needs to get rid of the current god, so that when you start again, you get a fresh one. Um, I think we'll have to do that. Yeah. Need to look into that. So let's... Um... Spawn alien. And it's saying self is unbound. Ah, that's a bit annoying. Well, that's interesting. And that is because... that when this macro expanded, it defined a class. Oh, it's up here. And the spawn alien is in the init form. That's just no good. We can't have that anymore. That is not allowed. Okay. Mm. I think we're going to have to define an after initialize method which sets up the which sets up the state and then we've already got the thing we've already got this function down here this lambda which this one specifically ah no that's a slight variant because it's not going to initialize things that are Marked T. Okay, so we, yeah, we need something like this, um, but just called immediately after initialize. And that's fine. I mean, we could use after initialize, or I could just make an init actor method and we'll, we'll specialize on that, which I think is the way I'm going to go. Now I come to think of it. Um, so let's, let's just do that. Let's go to actors. Any actor, it's gonna take an actor. In our macro down here. 
I can have def method in actor, and we're specializing with an actor called name. Yeah, we can just do self, can we? That's fine. And then where was that function down here? It's part of this and part something else. Let's have a look. Paste that there because we're going to need it. I don't need that. We don't need don't change at all. We do this. And then we need whatever was being done inside that other function, the uh, tasks one. What is it called? Oh no, it was update all existing actors. That's what it was called. And so that takes the, just doing this. Taking all the state, all the slot names and values and setting the slot value. Oh yeah, it's just setting it to val, that's fine. Let's just take this whole loop and we will go and fuck around with it up here. We won't need this anymore. Um, and all we're going to do actually is change what this emits. We're going to say set f slot value. Name. Give me self. And it's setting it to bow like that and that should be all we need let's see what gets admitted if we try and expand some of our regular guys so if we do define actor now we have an in actor which is a method which sets speed to one fine if we go and take ship which has the most state we can see we've got an init actor which does two sets. It sets the time to now and it sets the stepper to 0.1 seconds, blah, blah, blah. That's cool. That looks like what we wanted. So now we just have to have um, spawn down here, make an instance and then immediately Call in actor on it. And we'll have to do that for both copies of its state. But that should be fine. I can't see that being a problem. Oh, it is kind of a problem though, isn't it? Because Yeah, that, that's kind of special. So this was a bug that we already had, and that's these should actually be sharing the same objects in their slots I think oh wait ah that's really annoying so we want them to have references to the same actors because otherwise every frame they're going to change actor I think I'm not sure on that one let's see if we can get away with this for now and we'll see how badly it fucks up um, as we start doing this more but I get the feeling at the moment that God is going to spawn two aliens and it's going to look like there's one We'll find out. Um, one thing we do still need to do is in our actors code, which we were already in that file, Chris, um, in our def class, the init form is going to be removed. Yes, I think that's correct. And you can spawn passing in arguments, and that's completely okay. And they will be passed in, but it's not going to do that inside the def class itself. I think that's fine. We'll see. We'll see. Who knows? It's been a bit of a tricky one, to be honest. So currently stopped. Let's try and recompile all this stuff. 
no warning so far, which is good, probably. Let's see if it breaks. Yes, good, okay. Uh, yeah, inside any actor, it doesn't know what self is. And that's reasonable. So let's go and have a look at that. We'll go to test. We will expand this guy and we'll look for self. Well, it's not... A Oh yeah, we haven't expanded this yet. Self star. Okay, so let's look at that error again and see what it's complaining about. It's trying to spawn an alien. And it's trying to do it, which it will be trying to do inside any in actor here. And it doesn't know what self is. And that's fine. Okay, so we just need to go and put a let in here that sets that. tests we can recompile that we can bring up the error that we had before or right, so if I close that fair enough we'll do stop and then start and it blew up again okay interesting Something is cooling at the wrong thing entirely. Let's have a look at this. It's trying to write into the next slot, which is fine. That's going to be happening inside spawn, which I can also believe. But it looks like the result of any actor is wrong. Oh, yes, it will be. Because this needs to return the actor that was being initialized. Whoops. Okay, there we go. Recompile everything and test again. Go back to the REPL. Let's stop. Let's start. Fuck! That act, this actual one is completely expected. Um, this is one of the same problems we had just a second ago, which was to do with the spawn into value is not set. Think it's okay to put it into current actors, or is it going to be next actors? When is this going to be run? Spawn is being run inside. That's a good question, actually. Not sure. Let's just try this and we'll see what we get. Because that's rigorous. In actor, spawn into current actors. Okay, cool. So our spaceship comes back. Disappears. New one reappears. Good. Let's look at the current actors list. That's a lot of aliens. That is too many goddamn aliens. Oh, what are you typing, Chris? And it's going up all the time. Fuck. Okay, so the reason is um, here, where is it? It's spawn. This T Lambda was meant to get rid of itself. That got rid of them all. Um, So produced a temporal lambda, so we went into a queue spawn.
and after two seconds it spawns a new alien and put it in the alien slot which now should mean that the alien in there isn't dead oh for fuck's sake i'm checking that temporary variable still no wonder i'm having all these problems okay cool we can tell aliens to stop dying now okay and i'm still worried i'm gonna have uh fucking tons of them in there what the shit Oh, it is putting those in a hurry and there are two all the time which was what I was worried about ah problems hey Johnny hey there man tell him I've been checking the chat for a while it's been 10 minutes of me just going what what at this this isn't what I was meant to be doing today okay stare back and have a look let's Let's leave this for now. No, I'm kind of... No, we've, we've got nothing else that we're specifically meant to be doing. Let's have a look at this. Okay. What? There's just some weird code fuck-ups here. If the alien is dead... And... We haven't got another spawn counter... Then change to this step, which sets up the spawn counter. And then changes back to running again, which is fine. And when there's a spawn counter, we just call it. Okay, that's that's fine. And then at some point, after two seconds, it's going to set the alien up again. And it's going to set the spawn count to nil, which should be it done. But... Ah, that's kind of interesting, actually. I bet we're capturing... This lambda's probably capturing the state of the version of the actor that was current at the time, and because we flip-flop state, they could be pointing to the wrong one. Oh, that's garbage. Okay, so we're going to have to... We're going to have to have better ways of doing this. So it's fine for... Oh, man, this is actually kind of fiddly. One second, let me bring up a... Uh, let's bring up eShell and... Load up Gromit. And hopefully we've got a pen around here somewhere. Okay. So, the way we handle our state is we have all of our actors have a dual pair like this. And so we have the state for this actor here. And when we update the actor, we write all the changes into this copy. So this is where the changes go. And then at the end of the frame, we swap positions. So this is now the current actor, and this is its kind of state target. This is where the changes are going to be written. But currently, that means we've got a few problems, like... Um, we've got some state which we kind of only want to belong which we want to belong to both of them like so when God spawns it spawns itself an alien but this means both copies of this spawn an alien so there's now two aliens in the scene which is stupid um, and but the, so you would immediately go, oh, okay, then we'll have the same alien in both of these. They can just, the thing they spawn, can, they can both reference the same object. But then we break the model of uh, concurrent state updates, which is a bit, just a bit crap, really. So what I guess we really need to do is actors should be a box which have state objects that go like this, that swap. 
No, this still doesn't fix it. Um, because you still need two copies of the actors and different ones active at different times. Blah! So it needs to really be when you do spawn, what you should be returned is a reference to that particular actor. No, I don't like it. <laughs> that is not okay. So basically, right now we shouldn't be using spawn inside these uh, the local the local state portion of the actor definitions because it just is wrong. In fact, anything that has anything that has state really is kind of a kind of a problem. Hmm. But really, actors are a big one. We, we can't be spawning actors here. Alright, well, I mean, by talking this out in the stream, at least we're... Uh, we've identified the problem, and by nattering about it on the stream, it's documented in some form. Um, I'll have to come back to this later and see what I want to do about this. Um... But for now, we want to get on with the stream, and the goal was to actually do some work on APIs and stuff today. So, I don't really want to fix this right now. So we will have alien and... Oh, yeah, how will we do this? I don't know. All I'm going to do for now is I'm going to just say every 20 seconds it's going to spawn another alien, or something like that. Seconds, every 30 of them. This extra state for now, and that will probably do. No, oh, we are running at the moment. Okay, cool. Ha! Huh, what a pain. That wasn't how I wanted that to go. But that's what you get. Design engines, things are going to get strange. Okay, so. Um, I want to be able to get the angle between two uh, different actors. We will add querying for other actors later. Um, we'll probably just start off. The only thing that gives us another actor right now is when you say touching, it returns a set of actors. Um, so that's a place to start. But for now, we'll just prototype some things. And we'll, we'll see where it goes. So angle to another actor. And implicitly, the source is self. In fact, I don't really need to define that. We can just... Yeah, no, let's do it anyway. Source is self. It probably has an angle, I think. All actors have an angle. They have a rotation. Yeah, rotation is just a, is just a float. And so let's see what RTG Math has for... Um, well, actually, we don't need that at all. If we've got two angles, we can just... And they're always going to be in... That's interesting, actually. It's a, yet again, there's another, another consequence. Um, we don't really want actors to be able to... Do we want actors to be able to get their own rotation? Because if you, if you say, hey, what's my rotation? It's 90. That's really in world space. But really, we want actors to always be thinking about themselves as the center of the universe. It's like, they only care about themselves. And so then ac angle in its, like, rotation in its raw form means nothing. What, whichever way is facing, it's facing. Um, and the same for position as well. Position is zero, zero. Like, like there's no, there's no reason to expose that. So these accessors position and rotation will probably remove and I'll just do a quick grip to see if they're used anywhere position rotation 
Yep, rotation, well, it's there, and rotate F, which is fine. We're not, it's not the thing we're looking for. And position. Yes, it's used in a few places. It's used here. But that's okay. This is about slot values, not using the accessor function directly. This is using position. Let's go with slots to get the visual and the position of the actor. And that's this guy here. And slot value for visual here, we can get rid of that. And position there. Okay, so that should be fine. And then I'm just going to recompile this quickly so we get a. Oh, for goodness sake! Position here <laughs> with slots, position. a bit weird. Ah, oh, no, okay. <sighs> um, with slots has a thing that allows you to give it a different local variable name. One second. Actually, no, I, I won't do that. Let's just use slot value here. So do this, do this, do this. Slot value. Fine, where else it's being used? Slot value position. Nope, that's fine. Don't know why I didn't do that with multiple cursors, but never mind. And okay. This isn't relevant. That's GPU function. It's another GPU function. This is some code we need to get rid of anyway because it already was using state that it shouldn't see. Continue. Hopefully we're back running again now. Yep, good. Okay, so yes. Actors can't see their own position in the world or their own rotation in the world. Everything is just, yeah. Everything is local to self. So, Going back into the actors API again. Let's just bring up this. No, bring up test. The angle to another actor is. Yeah, just we need to take the difference between. Uh, yeah, the angle between the two vectors. I'm pretty sure there was a thing in RTG math for that. Uh, V2 angle between. Vec A and Vec B, and what's angle from? What are the difference between those two? Oh, right, okay. So, angle between is always going to be positive. Angle from is what we need then. Angle from. So, we need to get the direction that we're pointing. So, V2 from angle. 
And then we can use our own rotation here. So we do um, with slots, we'll get our position and our rotation for source or just self. Let's just put that there. We don't need this. And I think we were storing our angles as degrees, if I'm not entirely mistaken. So we'll see. And then we want the vector from us to the other actor. And I think our positions at the moment are vector threes. Let's just go and check that. We bring up the current actors and then um, inspect it and pick any one of these. Our position, yes, are vector threes because we want to be able to use um, depth and all that kind of stuff. But we only need a vector two. So it's vector two minus swizzle. Um, the position, so it's our position, x, y, and the position of the other actor. Yeah, this just isn't that pretty, but oh well. Okay, so then if I set self to something, Ah, see, again, we've got two, two ships here, which is just wrong. Probably means they're both shooting as well. Arr. Things, it's just mistakes here. Just a lot of mistakes. Let's just get element zero from that last sequence, which is ship, and we'll set temp zero to be that. So we have one thing, and then we're gonna want another actor. So let's go and spawn an alien. Who just isn't gonna spawn now? Oh yes, of course, they immediately die at the moment. Forgot about that. Oh, that's... Of course, I left that timer in there. It was meant to be spawning another alien every 20 seconds or so. There it is. <laughs> I wonder why that wasn't appearing. Cool, anyway, current actors. Now there's a load of bullets, and there's... Right, element... That, too, is an alien, okay. So let's define another temporary variable. Temp one is that. So we got temp zero, which is our ship, and temp one, um, which is our alien. If we look at the values for position value, and rotation value should be zero. Let's get the position value for temp one. Yep, different position, that's good. Ah, so if we can set self to be temp one, uh, temp zero, sorry, the alien and, sorry, the, our ship. And then we're gonna set, say we'll get the angle to temp one. We get 2.93, which is gonna be a, in radians, I expect. Okay, so we really need to work out what we're going to be storing our rotation in and what we're going to yeah what we're going to work with basically i think we should store our rotation in radians and then just convert it every time wow really have we not got blending going on well that's nice fuck off um some problems there Hmm. 
And Fiano has appeared. Hello. Had to cook dinner. No problem. Yeah, one of the things I have a worry with um, game dev and Rust, and I need to kind of look into, is just, like, a lot of game dev stuff ends up using, for the performance reasons that people are after, a lot of custom allocators. And I don't know how custom allocators and all that stuff would really work within Rust's borrow checking. I guess you're just... I, I know you can borrow values out of, like, slices, arrays, and things like this, but... Can you have multiple borrows of the same thing out of a single array? I didn't think that was allowed. Let's uh, turn the frequency that we're getting you aliens. Currently 30 seconds will change to 120 seconds. So yeah, do we store our angles in radians and then just convert whenever we're querying? I think that's probably what I'm going to do. So this will just be degrees, which is going to take radians and return them. So it's 135 degrees, apparently, between those two. Have I got that round the right way, I wonder? We need some known quantities here. Um... Let's do V2 angle from um, 0, 1, so that's directly forward, and um, 1, 0. So that's minus 1.57, which in degrees is minus 90. That's cool. And so if this is 1, 1, it's at 45 degrees, yeah. So that's cool. So that seems to be right. Um, for our little displacement um, vector, let's have a look. We have got, come on now, our position and their position. Oops, let's just say that's 10 and that's 5. And then we're doing our position minus their position, which is going to be minus 5, which is not that because this is clearly going up. So we've got those two round the wrong way. Now, if we do that self-test again, minus 44 degrees, which would be that way. So if the ship was there at that point, the ship we were talking about is gone now, which is kind of annoying. This is why we need queries, because we're going to need to be able to query which alien is on the screen and all this kind of stuff. And um, yeah, maybe we could do it like whenever a bullet hits, we find the angle between the ship and the alien. Which we might be able to do actually. So let's. This is the problem. We're trying to test this without the API. We're trying to test the API that we're building without having an API that we need to test it. <laughs> Fired by nil. Spawn bullet. Fired by self. Now, do we want people? It's kind of a weird thing we can do there. And then we can say that when we fire this, all of those bullets should have information on who fired them. Really should have checked. <laughs> but anyway, what we'll do is when they're touching an alien, before they die, they will print the angle to... Ah, uh, that's interesting. Because we can get the angle between them and the alien, but they're going to be so close, that's really not what I want to check. I want to check the angle between. And that requires two actors. From actor to actor. Let's 
kind of this. So when fired by, angle between, fired by, and the one we've touched, which is an alien. But again, here's, here's interesting things from our API. Let's just put this in a let. Let touched this. So that's whatever we're touching. So let's change this to touching, actually. Now this uh, touching predicate returns all of the, a list of all the things that that object is touching. So we kind of need to make sure that our, our functions can take any number of these things, but that really doesn't make any sense between angle between, so we say angle between something and a set of something else do you return like a set of results and then how far do we go do we let that propagate everywhere or do we have it that the touching predicate returns one thing if you're touching one thing or a list of things if you're touching multiple things which makes sense for some stuff but what if it's colliding with what if, it's, if it collides with two things simultaneously and then you, oh yeah, it's just not, it's not quite what we want. Um, what we can do is we can say um, angle between first of touching. I mean, that's, no, I guess that's what we'll have to do. But it would be nice to not have to think about that stuff too much. Ah, we'll see. Let's wait for the next alien to pop up and then uh, we'll see what to do. Let's drop this time down again to something a bit more frequent. So Mafania is talking about using um, Chimera's QT bindings. Well, QTools, I actually, again, I've been musing about using that myself. I think I want to build a QTools um, host for Keppel and then just start building. I, I, I'm getting to the point where I'm going to need some tooling soon. I'm working on some data, musing on, on an idea for a data processing library, and I'm going to want some kind of tooling to go along with that. Okay, here we go. Okay, so that would have been a lot more interesting. No! All of it's nil. Nil, 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 nil. What the fuck? Tests. When touching and fired by... Oh, come on. does suggest that it was fired by that wasn't actually uh, populated. Let's have a look. Um, yeah, let's comment this stuff out and instead we'll just print a list of what was being, what was touching and fired by. And let's just fire all this shit and see what we get. So these bullets were the ones that went off screen and died. These were the ones that hit something and died. All of them um, don't have an object that they were fired by, which is really annoying. I wonder why that is. Hmm. So 
So we're spawning. Let's go have a look at spawning. So I'm pretty sure we had that working originally. Oops. Spawn. There we go. Oh, here's an interesting thing. We pass in a bunch of arguments, like the person that fired us, fired by in this case. We make the instance passing in those arguments, and then we call init actor. Init actor then goes and overwrites those. So it's not taking into, effect, into account the things that were set legitimately through the arguments. So init actor is also going to have to take args, and it's going to have to take that into account. So let's go and redefine this. Let's go to the generic function. I want to say um, spawn args. When we compile this, it's going to complain that one already exists. Um, but we're going to remove all the methods and continue anyway. And then we're going to find the definition of init actor. We'll probably get a crash soon as it tries to spawn a new alien and the signature's wrong, or it doesn't exist for that type, but we'll see that soon. There it is. Requires at least two arguments. Okay, so spawn args is going to arrive, and then what is going to happen? Um, we are going to go through all the things and we want it to be un we want to set the default value unless it was already set in the spawn arcs so we'll just do when so unless find name in spawn args and I guess the key is going to be first I'm not really sure um, man this is ugly um, then we'll set this let's go and look at what this is going to result in code wise okay so init actor is now going to try and find fired by in the list of spawn args But I've got a feeling that spawn args is actually going to be... Oh, I'm kind of confused now. I think these arguments might be keywords. Let's try this. So, yeah, I think we're just going to say... A, oh, which way are we going to do this? Oh, there is everywhere. Right. In it, actor. Let's go and update all the places where it's meant to be used. Let's um, assume this code is right. I'm going to put a breakpoint in here. No, I won't put the breakpoint there, actually. I'll put the breakpoint where any actor is called. So let's grip for any actor. It's called here in spawn. That's correct. It takes two arguments. And so what we'll do instead is when we get to here, we'll break, we'll say foo, and we'll look at args and see how they're formatted. Let's retry and see what we get. Foo, nil, damn, that doesn't help us. Continue. Oh no, we need to, we can just trigger it with bullets. Okay, so fired by is a keyword. That makes sense given what we're going to pass it to. A little bit annoying, but we can work with this. Um, let's go back to the actors macro. Keyword vars. Oh no, that's not it. Um,
Okay, so... The init argument doesn't need to be um, a keyword. Yeah, we kind of want it to be, though. Never mind. Forget that. Let's just make the local var keywords. Map car, um, a lambda, which is going to take a name, and it is going to intern that as a keyword. And that is, we'll take local var names, we'll make keywords out of those. We have local var keywords. And then where were we using it? Down here. So before that, we'll say for keyword in local var keywords, collect, and then we'll get rid of this keyword. Okay, so that's just a bit of refactoring. So far, no actual behavioral changes other than this is just wrong. Name. Okay. So, where was I? Keyword up here in def class. Yeah, so now it's an in actor. We want to find, oh. Ah, oh, but wait, wait a second. I've been thinking about this wrong. The the slot name is always just the keyword version of the. Oh no, the ah the the uh, init arg is always just the keyword version of the slot name. So we can we can just compare using find. We'll just set the test to compare them by string because that works on symbols. Um. That should be fine. So we'll compile this, compile this. Actually, we'll remove that breakpoint. We'll go to our test code, we'll recompile it all. And we will fire some bullets, which don't work. The value fired by is not type of list. What? What are you talking about? Okay, so. In it actor was called with ah it's like an A list interesting. I thought these were paired up, but that of course it wouldn't be. All right. Um, how should we do this then? Oh yeah, we just need to get rid of the key. We just need to... Okay, that's fine. Ah, no! This is wrong too, because now it's also going to be checking the... It's going to be checking all the values, so if one of the values was called fired by, that would trigger this case. God damn it! This is you get doing everything with lists. What a stupid language. Let's just completely ignore the fact that it has all sorts of other types that I'm just not using. Um, okay, so in in actor. Keywords, map car, first, spawn args. Um, let's call it spawn keywords. Spawn keys. Get rid of this and just leave the test as it was, and that should be fine. And again, we're going to go to test. We're going to recompile all of these definitions we've got so far. Still freaking out. Oh, and I think I remember why. If I go back and then I was doing that first again, which I don't want to do, I want to pick every every even element, basically, from the list. What's the easiest way of doing that? Like picking just like every other element. I mean, I could just do it with a loop, I suppose, but that's kind of... It sounds like there'll be something that's really easy to do. Oh, I've been missing things in the chat like crazy. What's going on here? Of 
Afanio, um, sorry for mispronouncing your name again, Afiano. Um, is there any interpolation on that alien ship movement? No, I'm just using, well, I mean, it's just sign, just putting sign on it. And it's being done in a really janky way. It's just, uh, it's just there, so we've got something moving. Uh, if you're talking about the ship we're controlling at the bottom, there is none. Um, yeah, they're all linear, but it's, again, at the moment, I'm just trying to get, this, this isn't a game. <laughs> This is this is some kind of heap of shit that we we can test against. Um, it, Shamara's asking if anyone here actually plays video games. Fuck yeah, man! Just very rarely. I don't play nearly enough. It's a real bummer. Just uh, I love coding too much. Um, just been playing a uh, Last Guardian the other day, which was fantastic. I've got a pile of games I should be playing though. Yeah, I got a good few things sitting in GOG as well that I haven't played yet. Ori was probably the best game um, Michael had played in the last 20 years. Really? Yeah, I saw the intro to that and I kind of just haven't been drawn in yet. But um, I don't know. It's one of those ones that gets kind of rave kind of emotional reviews. But I didn't feel it from the first 10 minutes of the game. Not like Journey, which just fucking hit me straight away. And like... Shadow of the Colossus and things like that, where you get that first, first creature, and it just leaves such an impact on you. It's I don't know, amazing. Yeah, if you want to see some streaming games, check out Shamara stuff. It's creative swearing on top of computer games. It's good. Right. Where was I? Who knows? Oh, yeah. I was trying to do first on this. Stupid boy. So, we've got a list of things one two three four five six and we want to get the even ones what is that in in lisp um i think we can do loop um for x y on this or something like this i can't remember collect x nope oh no that does uh that's doing kind of zero, one, one, two, two, three, three, four. I mean, I can just do um, for i from zero and then when even pi collect x. What the fuck? I don't want that down here. Holy shit, I am just jumping all over the place today. Don't drink wine before streaming, kids. Yeah, so that'll be that. Oh, buy! I forget that buy can take a function, that's awesome. Well, that's awesome. Thanks, Mike. That is what we need. Ah, where were you now? Actors code. So this will be spawn args. And that's it, we're just collecting the ones that's there. Let's try and shoot a bullet again. Of course, I remember why, because now we need to go and recompile those because it was a macro and it needs to generate. Finally, okay, so now if we go back to here. Oh, 
Okay, so now we're actually getting the ship that fired the damn thing. Bloody hell. Bugs everywhere. Right. Cool, cool. That actually looked fairly good. So that's, um, if I shoot some bullets around here and stick to the left, we can see that it's a minus number. And if I shoot some and then get way over the other side, we can see it's positive. Uh, rotations are anti-clockwise. So that's pretty reasonable and it's in degrees. That's all right by me. Go on, you fucker, where are you? There we go. Looks dead. Right, okay, so that was took a long damn time. So, all kinds of changes here, so let's push in those ones. No, everything except. Yeah, let's stage all this, and then we're going to actors, and that last bit here, the whole. Um, is dead, is alive, angle between. We'll do these as a separate commit. And we'll do this test as a separate commit as well. So remove pos and rotation from public API. Um, Also fix up spawn uh, when called from um, different parts of the update loop. Cool. Add is alive. Oh, fine. <laughs> is dead. Is alive. And oh yeah. Two things, angle between and angle two. Noodle around in the test file. <laughs> Some errors. Suggesting in code what I should be drinking before I start stream. I can't drink them. Then I won't have an excuse for how badly I'm doing different things during the stream. I've got to say, oh, I clearly haven't had enough. X. Well, that's cool. Good. So. Now we're actually moving a bit. So the angle between, yes, if we're going to have... Um, Um, so angle two, yeah, we take our forward direction, the vector to the other guy and we find the angle between them. That's cool. Uh, we should probably have turn left and turn right by certain amounts. I'm not sure if we have that yet. Or maybe, really, we just need turn, and we can say minus is clockwise, and the other stuff is counterclockwise. But it wouldn't actually hurt to have both of them. Really annoyed that the blending's not there as well, or something's funky with the blending. Yeah, it can't be nothing, because obviously we're seeing the background around here. It's just um, because we're doing them in the same pass, and I'm, I'm forgetting something really obvious. No, no, we're not doing the same pass. What are we doing? I don't. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh yeah, we should be sorting from back to front. That's what we should be doing. We could actually just turn off um, depth buffer, couldn't we? Oh, 
Oh, come on, you stupid fucker. Oh, it's over here. Okay, fine. Um, draw a reactor. Yeah, for this whole thing, we could probably just... Turn off for the duration. Let's have a look. With ZF... Oh, have I got that handy? No. We'll load this on the REPL. Quick load with ZF. Um, now it's back in actors code again, which is over here. Update actors, here we go. Let's pull that in, so that's with set F. Okay, finally. So we want to look at the, probably the test function. Depth test function is less than. So if we just set this to nil for the duration. Here we go, that was it. Yeah, transparency is a fucking pain in the ass, especially when you start throwing in things like deferred rendering and all that stuff. Bah! There's just no solution. There are just different ways of doing shit. I'll need to fix those collision boxes one day as well, but right now, don't have to care. Cool. Okay, so another distraction gone. What was that? Let's uh This is like a really tedious version of Into the Wild. Where it's like no Breath of the Wild, sorry. Because that game is just like everywhere you walk there's just some lovely distraction. Where in this one it's everything I try and type I get distracted by some other part that's broken. A depressing, hairy version of a beautiful adventure. Right, so let's have a look. Um, ah, depth test when rendering. Cool. Fine. So we've got turn. Yeah, I think we'll have turn left and turn right. It's just just nice to have it. So we're going to get the radians from our angle and we're going to uh, with slots rotation of self set. We don't need to do that. We'll do increment radians by no, increment rotation by radians angle. Fine. That's turn left. And turn right is obviously just this with a negated angle. But I get the feeling that this isn't going to work. So, and I think it's just that I don't take rotation into account right now. I'm not sure. Let's have a look. Dun dun dun. Where is our test code? Let's bring it over here. Let's go into our ship. And then we'll just say turn left by one. Right. Nothing happening. We'll turn it down a bit so when this does work, it just doesn't go fucking mental. But turn left should be doing things now, and it's not. Oops. But I do believe this function is correct. So I'm going to 
just stage that for now and we'll commit this in a minute. Um, all we need really is to look at draw, um, which will be around here, draw, actor. Yep, we don't do anything with this, so there it is. Is that wrong? And four is tell and define. Thank you. Uh, just continue on the next frame. Ah, so we got a few things going wrong here. That's interesting. Okay. <laughs> what the fuck? All right, that's fun. Um, yeah, that's what it should have been. Some of the little pulsing artifacts that we had there were actually down to the fact that... Uh, ah, that's also incorrect. When we spawn something, it should have the same direction as we do. Anyway. Uh, um, one of the artifacts we could see while that was happening was the fact that there are two ships in the same place right now, which is just stupid, which we can see when we look at ah, current actors. We can see two ships. This will be fixed. <sighs> but I really wanted to make some progress on the API things, and it isn't entirely stopping that. Okay, so, um, commit this, add, turn left and turn right, um, add rotation to render, let's push all those. What's next? Okay, so we've got turn left, turn right. Oh yeah, I want to fix that thing where we're shooting bullets and they are um, not facing in the same direction as us. So let us look at spawn because there are some things there that are wrong. So we pass in a position Here we go. And this is in the actor's local space. So if it's if the uh, position is zero one, then it depends on the angle. So zero one right now might be uh, I can't point at it because my cursor moves it. Uh, but it'll be yeah right in front of the right in front of the spaceship. So yeah, is one hundred in like in the direction the spaceship is facing. But we don't do that properly yet, so let's go and have a look. Um, and that should be pretty easy. We just take this and we could be really lazy actually. Just Come on. Oh yeah, it's gonna be, okay, M3 rotation. And we said it was in Z, sure. And the angle is going to be the rotation from, where is it? 
Where are you? Parent rotation, let's do this. And then we'll pass in to right, let's recompile this. We're gonna get an error. Um, oh. Yeah, rotation. That's gonna be parent rotation. Come on now. We're also going to set the value of rotation for this new actor to the parent's rotation as well. That's it. Now, I'm very surprised it hasn't crashed yet, but I guess because it hasn't tried to spawn anything else. Um, position here. There it is. That's the crash I was looking for. The actor name and then the parent position, and then the parent rotation, uh, which is just going to be zero in this case. And here it is going to be rotation, like this. And because this is getting a bit ugly, let's just do with slots, um, position and rotation of self. Oh, that's why we didn't do it, because then the names would collide and I was too lazy to look up in the spec to see what it was, what the syntax was for getting a slot and giving it a different local name. Never mind. But why am I being that lazy? Just do it, Chris. You should remember this stuff anyway. So, let's look for it. Variable name, slot name. That's all it was. Cool. So, parent boss, boss. Parent rotation, rotation. There. Bam. Parent boss. Parent rotation. Done. Done, 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 done. Continue. Okay, so it's wrong <laughs> in every way. Kind of interesting, actually. Hmm. What is the angle of that ship then? Uh, go to the test and where's turn left? Let's fuck with this. Set slot value um, self rotation to zero. Nope, that's correct. That's fine. Oops, set it to divide pi by, you know, eight. Come on now, where are you? There we go. Facing the right direction, but they're certainly moving in the wrong one. Still moving straight upwards. What's confusing me is I didn't think that was uh, what it was doing a second ago. No, no, they're going up. They're going straight up. Okay. So uh, forward is obviously not taking that into account. So where's bullet? Move forward is not taking rotation into account apparently. Move forward. You should be there. Oh, in some places we were assuming that we were storing the value as um, 
Oh no, yeah, it's assuming we're storing the value as degrees, but we're not, we're storing it as radians. So, uh... That's wrong in a different way. So if I did that in one place, then, um... I've probably done this in a few places. So let's go and look for degrees, which we use in one place, which is here. So we're doing the angle between. And let's look for radians. Yep, that's correct there. Ah, oh, I expected more places with that wrong, to be honest. Yep, well, we can see the, <laughs> see the angle is wrong. Oh, dear. Come on, where are we? Move forward. Here we go. Let's just... Um, we're just going to be lazy and go with consistency right now. So let's do M4, rotation Z, um, based on rotation, M4, multiply, um, oh yeah, no, this is, um, This is the uh, length. Yeah, we can do that. No, we can't. <laughs> oh yeah, again, M4. This is a vector three. That is not going to work. Derived type of this is also wrong because we're meant to be timesing by like multiplying against a vector. Just look at the type errors, Chris. Look at them. Okay. So now when this ship eventually turns around, we'll be able to shoot these guys. Fine. Cool. That's another bit done. Um, where's that turn left? Now, set this to zero. You're right, it's not a single float. Continue. You're gonna give me. <laughs> you can keep giving me this grief, aren't you? You just don't wanna fucking shut up! Let me have my small victories! We don't need to do this touching thing now because we've already tested that. So that's cool. So what have we got here? We have removed some crap and we've fixed up. Okay, so there's two things here. We've um, fixed, move forward. We've um, made spawn take rotation into account. And we fucked around with the test some more, but we're going to do that. So we'll keep going. 
Chimera saying, well, hey, my progress hasn't been better in the last two, much better in the last two hours either. Uh, I haven't even got my drawing done. Only have several shitty sketches that all landed <laughs> in the null device. Always store radians. Always have arguments radians too. No! Okay, right, that's gone. Um, so this bit here was really a hacky way of saying, um, is the object outside of the window? I mean, like, is it off screen? So like, we should throw at least a simple version of that in here. So defun is off screen or am off screen. Is off screen. It's going to be an actor passed in or it's going to be self. I think that works. I think self will be taken from that context. Yes, that definitely will. I've seen it been used for package and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so we just want to check if that guy isn't on the screen anymore. And. Ah, uh, what's the best way of doing this? I think we just take, let's take the maximum um... Oh! There's already a predicate waiting to go called off screen P. It's not implemented, but there it is. Um... When we... <laughs> The thing we used for collision at the moment is hacky, but it was working, um, which was just to see what the size of the visual is. So visual, um, nope, apparently not. Oh yeah, we've got the radius. Eww, yeah, and it's pretty wrong. <laughs> um, because at the moment it just takes the width and halves that and says that's the radius. So if you're within that, then it's a hit. Um, let's just take this and go back to our uh, access code and we'll implement off screen. And because I want to take ro rotation into account, we'll just say the well, we want to be sure that we're off screen. So, if we take half of the um, half of the x and half of the y, and find that length, then if the, our center position is that far away from yeah the edge of our viewport, then yeah, then it's off screen. I think that's right. Oh yeah, and at the moment our radius doesn't take into account any rotation or any shit like that. Ugh, we're gonna have to do proper bounding box stuff too. Again, like we, we're meant to do proper collision, we just haven't. Um, we'll get there. See you, Darius. Oh shit, it's actually 2234, I've overrun. Uh, I'm gonna bugger off. Uh, we can do off-screen. We can start with off-screen next time. I can't believe how little we actually got done. God damn. That's kind of annoying. Oh well. That's how it is some weeks. Never mind. Thanks so much for hanging around. Thanks for um, waiting for me to kick off. Um, questions, comments, as usual. You've got a couple of seconds before I kill the stream. Um, and then I'll just see you guys next week. Well, I'll try and have a bit more of a plan. I think, again, we just need to kind of keep keep bashing away on this. I might do some stuff off stream as well if I have time. I'm pretty low on time these days. Um, there's a lot of projects going on. I will, I will give you more news on that in coming months. Um, but yeah. Marianne, push. Good point, sir. Good point. So, or madam, or exciting other categories. 
there's actually nothing to push here. Um, yep, pushed. Thank you very much. Have I booked ELS yet? No, I didn't know the tickets were on sale yet. Has that just happened? Last time I went to the site, they weren't, I thought. But yeah, I'll do that. Um, I've just got to work out monies and things like that. No. Okay. So. Oh, the flight and hotel. No, I wanted, I wanted a rough idea of what the price of things were so I could, you know, plan. But yes, I, I, I do intend to be going. So um, I'll keep you posted on that one. Wicked, this'll do. I'll catch you later, folks. Thanks for stopping by. Ciao.